I know you all realize that I'm a fanatic about making my yeast starter. And this is basically my setup. I have a stir plate that runs a magnetic wand inside of an Erlenmeyer flask. Keeps the yeast and the mini wort all working together and I get a wonderful yeast count. However, this is not a heated stir plate. And there are heated stir plates. I just don't happen to have one. And it's also winter time here. And if you're like me, I turn my furnace way down when I go to bed. So it's 55, 54, 53, who knows, degrees in the house. And I want to keep this at 68 degrees. Well, what do I do? Well, <laughs> I came up with an idea to make a miniature fermentation chamber. So this is my fermentation chamber, basically a Coleman cooler. You'll notice I've got a thermometer that tells me the temperature inside because I drilled a little teeny hole to let it read inside temperatures. I did put some wood plates underneath so that the floor is level. You can see I've got the stir plate and a thousand milliliter flask sitting in the unit. It works great. Here's the cord that powers it. I turn the unit on to whatever speed I want it and I plug it in and out. Now I have got a great system to hold the heat in when I am fermenting. Now one thing that I did find is I could have put in a heating pad or something, which I initially did, didn't need to. The motor itself creates enough heat to keep this warm. In fact, I had to leave it slightly open to vent it and I just watched what the temperature was with the meter. Well, this little miniature fermentation chamber has worked really well for me. I don't have to worry about the fact that the temperature in my house is fluctuating up and down as the days go on. The temperature in here is staying right at 68 degrees. It's also large enough I can put a taller flask if I want to. 2,000 milliliter flax works really nice. And it's a simple cord that plugs into the wall. It's also cheap to make. I had the cooler and a teeny small hall for the little temperature gauge. Wow, how big is that? I can always plug it up if I need to have this to carry beer. So that's my thought for a mini fermentation chamber for your next yeast starter. I'd love to see what you come up with. Do you remember a couple episodes ago when we basically took a container like this and converted it into a monster fermentation lock. Well, I have to tell you, it is working even better than I thought it would. Let's take a look. Here is our giant fermentation lock in action and it is doing really well. You can see the level is right at the hose. You can even see some draining back. Now granted, the CO2 has no idea which hose to use, but it certainly has worked well because once the pressure is slightly released, it drains right back into the fermenter. This is working really well, and I am very pleased with how it is doing. Well, I know there's been some of you talking about making your own giant fermentation lock, monster fermentation lock, whatever you want to call it, but I've noticed you're interested. If you've made one and have tried it out, please share it with us on the show. I'd love to see what you've come up with. 